Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Monday in a brand new week of greatness. Today, I have a great idea, but where do I start? More on that right after this. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where five days a week, you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success. And now, here's the host of 7 Minutes in the Morning and your results coach, Tom Rigsby. Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. My name is Tom. This is seven minutes in the morning show where we talk about how to start, grow and enjoy the benefits of business ownership and entrepreneurship. And remember, you can be an entrepreneur, even if you don't own the place. When you get here, whether you're watching live or watching on the replay, go ahead and leave a comment. Say hi. Hello. Good morning. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Whatever makes you happy. It'll make me happy, too. And uh, lets me know that you are there. Actually, it lets me know specifically who is there because I can see that you're there, just not who you are. All right. Uh, Started a few minutes late this morning. Apologize for that. Hey, Catherine, thanks for being here. Uh, But I have a great question. And uh, I've mentioned to you guys a couple of times. I'm looking down at my phone this morning so I can read this. I... um, lurk a lot in the entrepreneurship startup business idea forums on uh, or subreddits on reddit rather and hey joe good morning and and i found a great question this weekend and i think it's one that uh we might explore a little bit this week because it's a really good question i have a great idea but where do i start uh let's see Can someone give me a rundown on how to start up a business? The biggest questions I have are how do you create a physical prototype and how do you mass produce? So I'll break that down just a little bit. And, um, this is, so generally speaking, there are two types of businesses, service-based and product-based service-based businesses. You're selling your service. I mean, sometimes you need supplies, products, um, materials in order to support selling that service, but you're generally not manufacturing anything. Product-based businesses, you have to manufacture something. The baseline for both of them, though, is still the same. An idea in and of itself has no value. Only the execution on that idea has any value, right? And I can prove it to you. You might sit here and say, hey, man, I've got a great idea. It's worth something. Well, how much money did it put in your bank account yesterday? That's how much the idea by itself is worth. It's not until you execute on that idea that it becomes valuable. How do you execute on the idea? Well, first you have to validate the idea. If you have an idea, then you also have some group of people for whom that idea will be valuable. And remember, value is in the eye of the buyer. Value is in the eye of the buyer. It doesn't matter how good you think the idea is. If nobody will buy it, then it's not a good idea. So once you have this idea, you have to begin by validating it. Part of the advice that I gave this person was to to take the idea, kind of describe the problem, the solution, and the value proposition. Show that to a couple of people that you trust. I'll get into that later. Uh, show it to a couple of people that you trust and then get their feedback on it. Iterate over it until they start asking, wow, is this real? When will this be ready? How much will this cost? When can I have it? Now, you know, you've gotten somewhere, you created something of value for those people. Now, when it's a physical product, you run into the next step, which is okay. I have to create a physical product. It's not nearly as difficult as it used to be just 10 years ago, right? I mean, now if you, you can download a free piece of software, create a 3d model, send it to a printer and it will print the thing for you. That not, might not be in the, in the state that it needs to be in for final production, but you can at least have something to hold, to touch, to show to somebody and say, Hey, is this about the right size, about the right weight? Does it look the color? Test all of that. Test, 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 test. 
All right. Now, while this testing is going on, you're iterating over the design, getting it to the MVP, minimum viable product. We've talked about that a lot here too. The least amount of product that someone will pay you for, right? It might, you might have an idea that's, that's all of this, but you only need this in order to start selling it. Do that, start selling it, get some revenue from it, and then upgrade, iterate over, continue the design and development. Now comes the hard part. Let's say I have a design and now I need production. And honestly, this is where the majority of, I see the majority of people get stuck and just give up. When you, when you start looking at run rate production, if you're going to produce a, a product for the masses, right? Where you have to sell thousands of them in order to, to realize any kind of success. First of all, I might steer you in a different direction, but second of all, you, you're going to have to get production help and it's impossible to get production help without showing somebody else your design. And just about everybody says, oh, my idea is so good. I don't want to show it to anybody and have them steal it from me. Here's the thing. We get into this mindset that I want to do this as cheaply as possible. So you start looking for people that will, man will manufacture it affordably, right? And, you know, then um, you engage with them. And then they promptly, not all of them, but they're much more likely to rip off your product. The ones that are not going to steal your idea are the ones for whom it would do more damage to steal your idea than it would to just make it for you. If they make millions of units of thousands of products every year and you're just a new customer, what value is it to them to steal your design? However, if you have someone who manufactures two or three products and you're of their own and you're one customer, it's a better value for them to just steal your product. And if you sue them, try to win in court because they've got the ability. The flip side is you can build all this on your own. You can create the prototype. Don't have to show it to anybody and go buy a 3d printer, learn how to do SketchUp, learn how to build a manufacturing facility, learn how to run it. You can do all that on your own, but, but there's a point of equilibrium here, right? Where it, it's just more cost effective to go out on your own. Now the question came up, I'll try to, nah, I don't know if I can even get into this today, but IP protection, IP is intellectual property. If you have a great idea, a world, an, a, a, a universe changing idea, then you might want to get it patented. It's about $10,000 plus to get a patent. But if you're going to make billions, then okay. Even millions. Yeah, okay. I can deal with that. And it takes a little while and it's a lot of work and you need a lawyer to help you with it, but you know, it's worthwhile. Will that keep people from stealing your idea? No, they can still steal it. And the only way for you to get any kind of recourse is to sue them. Another $10,000. The better way to do it, in my opinion, uh, you know, no lawyer, but in my opinion is just be first. Be first, flood the market. Don't give them any room to overtake you. Keep iterating, keep improving. Make your, you know, make your profit off of that. Take that profit, move on to the next product. Because somebody, as soon as it's out in the market, whether it's a design, whether it's a prototype, whether it's, you know, as seen on TV, somebody's going to knock it off. That's just what happens. So don't plan on it being exclusively yours forever and you won't be disappointed. Plan on taking your profits while you're the first in the market and then move on. Let other people have it. Be satisfied saying that. You see that rock with googly eyes on it? That was my idea. That's it. All right. We'll talk some more about this as we go through the week, but there's a couple of, I mean, a couple of the key points. There's a lot more to it, obviously, but understand what your customers deems valuable, test your idea with them, prototype it, produce it and move fast. I mean, speed wins in, uh, in this kind of game. Catherine said, I had my son start with a plan so he could go beyond knowing what he wanted to do 
and he could begin to see what he wanted to do. The other thing that comes from a plan, Catherine, and, and all of you, is a little dose of reality. Right? When you start seeing how much it costs to manufacture a piece, and that's got to come out of the retail price, and here's the little sliver that's left for you over here. Holy moly, how many of these things do I have to sell to buy a cheeseburger? Now, you know, you know, if you've got, and this is where I said I might suggest a different path. Don't do mass production. Do very, very specific, um, maybe not micro production, but smaller production. Be, th be the premium product in the market. Let other people come in underneath you and create knockoff products that are cheaper, not as high quality, not as customized. And you're, you're operating up here. Let them have every, all the dregs down there. And you get fewer people to deal with that are willing to pay you more. I don't know. Just a thought. Anyway, we'll talk about this some more. Have a magnificent Monday. If you have questions about how to start your business, how to grow your business, how to implement processes, systems, or deal with people, all of those things are things that my team and I can help you with, even improve sales or marketing or cash flow, all those things, <laughs> all those things. Or you need an IP lawyer, call me or uh, reach out to me, tomrigsby.com slash coaching, tomrigsby.com slash coaching. Get you to the place where you can fill out a form and schedule your one-on-one -on -one time with me. Do that right now before somebody else gets the slot that you need. You have a great Monday. I'll be back here again tomorrow. Oh, one more thing real quick before I go. Over the weekend, I worked on a... It uh, looks like it's going to be about a 30 minute video on my outcomes based framework for success. Out of that, I talked about smart goals and how I have a little bit of a different take on smart goals. You've probably heard of smart goals before, but I have a little bit different take. I went ahead and clipped that out and made a little short seven. It's a few seconds past seven minutes, a little video, um, for that, um, that's going to uh, publish on YouTube at eight o'clock today. So at the top of the hour, be on the lookout for that. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you should youtube.com slash Tom Rigsby, all one word, no spaces. You can Google me. I'm the only one on there with my name. Um, but that'll come out. I may run that, uh, some of it in part or in whole here tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. I've got an early day tomorrow, so we'll see how, how that works out. But um, anyway, be on the lookout for that or social media posts pointing you to that. All right. Now, really, that's it. You guys have a good Monday. Talk to you tomorrow.